Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Madden 23 Franchise Mode. Here in the MFL, Week 15 is upon us. Game 3 of Metro Prime Time. We've moved the regular season down to just four games that I will be covering each year, which means it's going to be that much harder, that much more important, that much more pressure for you to shine when the lights are on you. Somehow... The Buffalo Bills are 7-6. and six. Now, I know what you're thinking. They're coming off of a championship. A 7-6 and six record is not that good. And it, honestly, if, if the league lets them do this again, I am just, I'm done. Look at this. They started out the year at what record? That's right, 2-5. and five, Which is exactly what happened. Last year, and we all know what ended up happening last year at the end of it. Somehow they've done it again, dude. I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't know why. Today, we're going to be focusing on the Miami Dolphins versus the Buffalo Bills. Casey Wood versus Zach Keister. Now, last time these two met was in week four. When the Bills beat the Dolphins 23-7 to in a game that was, well, very easy. They dominated them. Uh, Kyler Thompson... Has taken over the helm this year. He's been the starter all year for Miami. And he's led them better than past quarterbacks. For Zach Keister, he faced off against his old the dude he replaced. And, well, he out he outplayed him. So that's pretty interesting uh, as Devin Singletary kind of starts to bounce around the league. He played with Houston. Now he's in Miami. Tyreek, Stephon Diggs went at it. Keister just showing that he is an amazing player in not just the run game, but also in the air. This is going to be an interesting matchup. And the reason why we're tuning into this game is, well, because not because of anything other than the fact that these two teams are playing a playoff match, if you ask me. They're both 7-6, and six, tied for the lead in the playoffs. Miami, if they lose this game, any, any tiebreaker will go to Buffalo. And, well, this league, this year, the league doesn't have a dominating team, if you ask me. It's way more balanced this year, with the Rams and Bengals being tied with the Falcons and Buccaneers as the best team in the league, all at 9-4. and four. This league, this year, is really hard to tell who's going to go all the way. I got my money on the Bills, just because they've done this before. And they are on a five-win streak. As, as the Bengals and, and Rams are as well on a six-game win streak. But something about the Bills playing later in the season, I don't know. They've just proven to be very well. Your Tennessee Titans are also looking pretty good at 7-6. and six. We'll see what happens with with my team. But um, for the Dolphins, you know, a lot of teams, they got to they gotta beat here. And it starts with Buffalo. Four injuries coming into this game. A huge injury for the Bills and Nate Andrews. 75 overall starting right guard rookie that they drafted. Ruptured his disc a while back. He's been out. He's got three more weeks to be out. Uh, he is a star dev. This was a very big pickup for the Bills. They addressed the one issue they had last year at the offensive line, which is what they had. And just very good management by them. They get, they get the stud late in the third round. With the 32 pick of the third round, amazing pick from Mississippi State. Nate Andrews, unfortunately, couldn't stay healthy this year and hasn't really been able to be that much of an impact. But if they can make it to the playoffs, he'll be back. This was a very big pickup for them. And for those Dolphins, well, they're going to be missing their starting strong safety veteran, Eric Rowe, with a shoulder strain. Not too serious, but he won't be in today's game. So without further ado... Let's get into it. It's week 15 of the 2023 season, and we'll be watching the dynamic Tyreek Hill. So here we are at Hard as a Rock Stadium. Tyreek Hill, looking at him, Josh Allen, of course. Um, I think he's been playing a lot better since the beginning of the series. I mean, he's a champion. He shut all the haters up. This is a new year, late in the new year. And um, I think, uh, you know, Buffalo, they're exactly where they like to be. You know, the underdogs. And um, for Miami, 
they it, it's weird they find Skylar Thompson leading the helm here over to attack of Iloa they'd actually rather start Thompson and you know what's crazy it's not that unbelievable I don't know if you guys have been watching real life uh, but the preseason has finally wrapped up here as I'm recording this and I gotta say Skylar Thompson uh, he looks like he could take the, the starting spot I, I doubt they'll give it to him but because I, I you know he needs to get reps um, against starting you know caliber defenses but he looks phenomenal I mean any second third team defense he's tearing them up in the preseason so Skylar Thompson keep your eyes on that name he may be if, if Miami lets him go man I'm gonna be pissed he looks very good and he definitely should have won at least second string and so in this universe it's not that un uh, uh, unbelievable that uh he's here leading the Miami Dolphins over to attack of Iloa so We'll see what happens here. Miami trying to be get back into the playoffs. Um, it's been a while here in the MFL, and well, they don't have a championship. Uh, they've never even played in a Super Bowl in the MFL, so it'd be nice to see my favorite team do it. Uh, we'll see what happens here. We're gonna start off with some simming as Singletary going up against his old team here. See what he can do. Matt Milano with a pass break, and just like that, no, Devin Singletary is gonna keep the drive alive. But they'll be faced with a third and 13. In my opinion, defensive player of the year last year. At least should have been. I can't really remember if they gave it to him or not. But Von Miller, 31 sacks last year. He has slowed down this year. But still showing to be a big threat. Oh, but on third down, it's Tyreek Hill. Buffalo not going to be able to get off the board or off the field. Casey Woods gets his first reception. you got to keep your eyes on him as well. He is a third option still here. But that's not... That's... I'm not saying too much. I mean, you got Waddle and <laughs> Hill above you. Those are two very talented players, and Miami is up 7-0. They did struggle that drive, but they're going to finish it off with a touchdown. That's all that matters. For the Buffalo Bills, we'll see how they answer back. They're going to start it off with a handoff and then a big penalty against Javon Holland. Followed up with a second and 10. Handoff, four-yard rush, sets up a third and six, and they can, and they will pick it up. Josh Allen leaving the pocket. So here we go. Bill is driving down the field. Third and two. Can they? No. They stall out. Miami. Wait. Hold on now. Oh, wow. Miami's picking up from right there. I guess the Bills went for it on fourth down and didn't get it. And now it's a it's a punt. So we're going to hop in. Bills are inside their own five, man. This will be interesting to see what, what happens here. So first and ten, Keister fights off the tackle and somehow picks up a yard. That was impressive. I'm sorry, I thought that was about to be a safety for a second. He will check out. He did look tired. Josh Allen, pressure coming. It's going to be a dump down to the running back. Second string Zach Moss with the catch. Sets up a third and three. Keister checks back into the game here in as hard as a rock stadium. Josh Allen, dump down, nice pass. That's Jordan Gregory. He's he's been quiet. Um, I don't think he hit, hit a thousand yards last year, or if he did, it was barely. Um, and then this year, he doesn't look like he's on pace to get that. I think he's sitting around 600, 700 yards right now. I mean, possibly could have a few breakout games. It's never too late, that's for sure. His keister is going to get stuffed. Stephen Cruz there with the help. For Zach Keister, he's going to definitely get that 1,000-yard mark. He's also looking at breaking his 13 rushing touchdown that he set last year. He has 10 now, so he's got to get at least one eat, you know, for the rest of the year. He'll have 14 on the year. It'll be a career high for him. And Josh Allen, sitting at 20 touchdown passes, only five interceptions. He's, he's really hasn't been as bad. Big of a, of a risk taker, but he's definitely really toned down on the interceptions. He's actually in the top three for the least amount of interceptions thrown this year. So he's, he's sitting pretty well here. Josh Allen in the pocket, and he's gotten more comfortable with doing that right there. Sitting in the pocket, you know, running only when he needs to, and making sure he puts it on the money. So they're going to go pistol for the first time today. It's going to be handoff. Keister has a hole up the gut and picks up that first down. And Keister with a with a captain's patch on, 
I'll, okay, so Keister's got the he's the captain. Wow, that's a that's a big thing. He's at least one of them as he throws him off and cuts out to the outside, and then he loses the ball. Who has it? Oh, I thought number eight had it for a second. It's Timmy Train with the fumble recovery. Oh my goodness! At first, it looked like an amazing play by Keister. Turns out to be the worst play that you can have as a running back, and that's a fumble. And, um, you know, I think that's just a, a, a case of trying to do too much. You see it here? Keister, you, you know, he's going to throw him off here, keeps it going, and then you just it's too much. Ball does come out. I mean, it's clearly a fumble. Lucky that Holland doesn't pick it up. I thought Holland had it and was taking it to the house. Ends up Timmy Train's going to jump on it, pick it up as he gets pushed down there. But, um... Big play by that subscriber. Then he kicks it. <laughs> kicks it. Hey, save that for me. Anyways. Not a good day for Zach Keister there. So here we go. Oh, huge play to start off this drive. Chase Edmonds. Still with this team here in year two. And first and ten for Miami. At the 20. We'll see what Skylar Thompson can do. Our first look at him as a starter be interesting so shotgun formation in bunch Thompson dumped down nice pass and completed to set up a third and two seven for nine on the day that was Casey Woods with the catch and they're gonna go back to the ground game picking it up Singletary Give, a, give them a new set of downs here, and Miami starting off strong here in this game. So first and goal. They're going to go back to the shotgun. And, well, now we know it's a pass. We'll see. Bills look like they could send the heat. Only send four. Not going to work, though. But he doesn't reach. Waddle couldn't, couldn't quite reach it there. So Buffalo will set up a second down, but it's... Just inches away. Almost tries to cut in here. This can be hard to punch in. Buffalo has a very solid defensive line. We'll see. Second and goal. Hand off to the fullback, and he's going to get in. Touchdown, Miami. It's Jermaine, or Jeremy Hall with the touchdown. Big boy celebrating right there. Miami goes up 14 to 0 here. So a whole different story than the first game. As now Buffalo has the ball here and it's a huge reception to Gabriel Davis, the number 2 option for Josh Allen. Jordan Gregory still holds that third option. And there is actually a new subscriber on this team I haven't mentioned. TJ Jackson Jr. did get drafted by the Buffalo Bills. But uh he is a fourth option as it's Stefan Diggs taking the Buffalo Bills into the red zone. And this is why Buffalo is never out of it. They're a big shooter team, you know, big chunks at a time on offense. Expect the dump down to Zach Keister. I've seen it coming, and he will be brought down. Good open field tackle there. Second and four. Expect the handoff here. It's a toss play. Keister not getting anything. Oh, my God. Got crushed, and Zach Sealer is down. That, that was the hardest hit of the year so far. Third and five. Allen in the pocket. Pressure coming. Throws it. Nice cut. Jordan Gregory tries to stay up. Gets brought down. Number five's got a lot of tackles. He's a good open field tackler. I'm not sure who that is, but my phone is very loud. It's Keister up the gut. I do apologize for that. I'm going to go ahead and mute this. It's like really loud, actually. Second and goal. And man in motion here. Keister going to try and feed the beast. That's what they do. Up the gut untouched. Wow, amazing blocking. And it's Zach Keister riding the pony. He's riding. That's one of the most disrespectful <laughs> celebrations I think I've ever seen. When you ride the pony on him. Ride the pony, bro. Come on, man. I thought Keister had some class. No, I'm just kidding. That's... Classic Keister right there. Riding the pony, bro. 
man. This is this is phenomenal blocking. Look, this is what you want to see right here. Look at this beautiful, just uh, untouched. He could just literally just trot in there. I think that's why he chose to ride the pony because he just trotted in. You know what I mean? All right, boys, we got ourselves a game here, and this is why you know this is why I'm selectively picking four games to cover each year. No more than four for regular season. I want them to be competitive. So. If they're not competitive, man, it's going to be harder for you to get in there. Um, you know, you you got to shine. You got to you got to compete here in the spotlight. And so far, that's what both these teams are doing. 14 to 7. We'll see what happens. Casey Woods gets a nice catch. Third and four here, Buffalo. Oh, Casey Woods keeps the drive. Oh my god, Tyreek Hill takes the top off. Oh, I had a feeling it was coming. Oh my goodness. Tyreek Hill takes the top off. He He's never going to slow down. In year two with the Miami Dolphins, and now they're finally looking like a playoff team. And we'll see, can the Bills answer back? They have they have some, some big threats of their own. They have some big threats of their own. Jordan Gregory getting involved today. Can they finish? Stephon Diggs. Oh, Melvin Ingram gets in there, and they should settle for a field goal here if they can. And they will, and it's good. Tyler Bass. Puts it in 21 to 10 here in week 15. And the Buffalo Bills will get the ball starting the second half, which is good news for them. Oh, Steven Cruz, the subscriber edge rusher, which we have not heard about at all really this series, finally gets up, gets gets his name on the spotlight, man. This is honestly the first time we've actually taken a look at Miami like this. And it's because, well, they're 7-6 and six and they got a chance. Third and nine, we'll see what Buffalo does, and it's Jordan Gregory keeping the drive alive, man. He is come to play today. This is if you're if there's ever a time you're gonna come to, to, to have a breakout game, you wanna do it when the Metro Primetime lights are on. They're on right now. And Jordan Gregory's not letting it go to waste. Oh my god! He's going down the field, breaks one tackle, and finally ripped down inside the twenty. This is why they just signed this man to a big contract, by the way. I think it's a four-year deal. He's among the top paid tight ends. After his performance in the playoffs last year, he deserves it. And, and, and look at him right now. Money well spent. First and ten. Buffalo trying to have a dynasty here. We'll see if they can. And quick pass caught, and that's five yards. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. I love this new format that I have. It feels so much better. You know, it feels like we're getting through. We're gonna get through seasons. Um, I'm still playing every week, so I get to play a little more off camera and enjoy it myself, and not feel burnt out from watching having to make a video for every single week of the game. As Keister Stephen Cruz needs help, but he still holds on. That was a very big play by Steven Cruz. He is re he's really impressing me today here on Metro Primetime. Look at this. Keister's not an easy person to bring down, and he's going to struggle. But what he does here is he, he does his job. He holds him up long enough here for Baker to get in there and get some support. But, yeah, having this format really feels so – it feels more healthy, man. It feels – I'm still getting to and actually enjoy the games I get to play. And not feel like I have to stress out about getting a, an episode up every single day of every single week in the MFL. And I just think it's going to be so cool to see, possibly see every subscriber's career, you know, fully. I mean, we're going to be able to do a lot of years here. We could also honestly see a lot of uh, subscribers hang up the cleats. And, and see their whole careers unfold in this series. So I'm excited for that. So a, a three-point conversion. So two field goals now. Buffalo's offense has definitely slowed down here. Miami could try and put this one away with a touchdown here. Or you go three and out and you give Buffalo the ball right back. Wow. That's not what you want to happen there. Second and ten. Bills. Allen has to leave the pocket, picks up five. Third and five, and Emmanuel Ogba gets to the quarterback. It's a 10-yard loss. They're feeling that uh, right guard being out for sure. 
So we'll see here. Jalen Waddle, 12 yard reception. First and 10. Micah Hyde. Incomplete. Von Miller gets in for the second time today. Skylar Thompson goes down. Third and 18. Broken up by Tredavious White. He was phenomenal in the playoffs a year ago. And oh man. Inside the five. This punter for Miami Dolphins. He needs the punter's belt. Because he is the champion punter. This is the second time from inside their own five. Josh Allen, though. Oh, Stephon Diggs. Broken up. Number five. Who is that? He is phenomenal. I need to get a name. Second and ten. Buffalo. In a bad spot right now. Can they get out of it? Keister. It'll give him a little bit some of some more room. But uh, still in a tight spot here. Third and six. Allen's going to keep it. Miami sends five off the back foot. Oh, my goodness. Almost intercepted. And that's a just a lucky, probably the best thing that could have happened. He was really off the mark there. So Miami has the ball here. We'll see what they do. If they get to that 50, we're going to watch. Third, third and one. Oh, no. A big penalty. Third and ten. But they can still get it. That's Edwards, the rookie tight end that they drafted. And we're going to watch some Buffalo Bills defense and some Miami Dolphins offense. Skylar Thompson. Casey Wood. What are these guys going to do here? First and ten. Thompson. Feeling the pressure. He's going to scramble. And then he loses the ball. No one's picking it up. Vaughn Miller finally picks it up. And they didn't touch him down. Now they do. Oh, my goodness. Skylar Thompson. You know, he's only had a year. This is his first year starting. So he doesn't have a lot of it. This is his first full year starting. He, so you could look at this guy as a rookie. He's 27, I think, or 26. Um, now he was, yeah. So that's a play that, you know, I don't see Tua doing. So we'll see. But, like, you got to, I mean, there's not really a pocket he could step up into since 91 was coming. But you got to throw this one away. You got to know when the play's over with. And this is clearly a fumble here. And then Vaughn just stretches out for it. Look at that. That's a very big, uh, big play. All right, well, hey, we're going to watch this. You know, it was a turnover. They're inside their uh, opponent's, you know, territory. I expect them to start off with a run. Up the gut, and it gets just crushed. Keister. He has not done well today. Timmy Train is here. He shoots the gap, and he gets that payback on Keister, man. Timmy Train, I feel like, has always been able to clash and keep up with Keister. I don't really think Keister's ever gotten him, you know. Oh, no. Oh, oh that was intercepted. Oh, can Keister save the day? Yes, they can. Josh Allen, Keister, and Knox will get in there for the tackle, but oh, no. Man, number five. Is that number five? Are you serious? This is a bad, just a, an amazing cutoff here. Who? Coleman? Justin Coleman. Huh. That is a, fa he has a fantastic player for the Miami Dolphins. Look at this. He's just going to cut this off. Just not a, not a good pass, really. And uh, give the ball right back to Miami here. Oh, are you? Oh, career-ending injury? I don't know. Josh Allen does seem a little. Oh, oh, how is he going to be okay with that? I think that is an injury. Not sure they needed to take it, but we'll take it with him. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. Well, CD, for the losing side, they had opportunities in this one, but big plays just didn't go their way, especially late, and they have to suffer the L here. It certainly felt like that takeaway once it happened and knocked the wind out of their sails, and they just didn't get their equilibrium back. 
So for the Dolphins, they're not going to go quietly here as the win moves them now to 8-6 and six on the year. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the New England Patriots. Meanwhile, for Buffalo, their playoff hopes take a hit as they drop to 7-7. Seven and seven. And they'll try to get back on track next week as they head to Dallas to take on the Cowboys.